So if you're here, you probably have athlete's foot. That means itchy, flaking, painful skin. It could be in between your toes or it could be around the heel. And most commonly, it presents as just thick, dry skin. So dry, itchy skin. Most studies now show that this is foot fungus. If you can't moisturize it and it looks like this and it's starting to flake, and you've even had it for 5-10 years, you have foot fungus and it can lead to problems. Because it is the most common foot fungus, it can lead to crusting, scarring, flaking, and even ulceration. 15% of the world population has it, so it even looks like this, and you got to do something about it or else it's going to get worse in your old age. Now, the reason I say this is if you get ringworm or body fungus, the school nurse right here will send you home and you can't come back to school without a doctor's note saying it's being treated. But foot fungus can end up looking like this, but just because it's hidden behind your socks, no one will ever know, but it's just as dangerous. It can destroy your skin. It can ulcerate. It can get into your blood and lead to uh, full-grown sepsis in some immunocompromised people and everybody's afraid of toenail fungus because once you get it it's very hard to get it get rid of it but newsflash you don't get toenail fungus unless it comes from your skin first so the new theory is that there's always foot fungus before you have toenail fungus even if it's in subclinical levels just the thin flaky skin or the thick flaky skin. And it could even get as bad as this. And it causes foot fungus, as I just said. So if you don't want ugly nails like this, you gotta do something about your foot fungus. And I'm gonna teach you how. Okay, so your skin takes about 30 days to grow. So you have your stem cells at the bottom and they slowly migrate to the top and make your thin, a thicker skin right here over 30 days. Now some people have genetics where they just can't stop fungus from getting in here. I've seen families where the father and the sons will get it, even though the sons are young and healthy, but the mother will never get it, even though you throw as much fungus as you can at her. So keep that in mind, a four-week cycle. Your environment. If you're sweating, that's quite a bit. You need to change your socks, especially if you have cotton socks and non-synthetic socks. Fungus love warmth and moisture, which is your foot. And if you have footwear, like tight shoe, uh, not tight shoes, but non-aerated shoes, the water can't get out of there, and the fungus thrive in that. They grow. If you have old footwear, same thing. You could have fungal spores in there that are difficult to eradicate. You want to use Lysol. You want to use antifungal powders. Antifungal powders are fantastic. So change your socks. Get some synthetic socks. Get breathable shoes. Uh, clean out your old footwear and use some fungal powders if you if you can't change your shoe gear. So clean socks, try and avoid cotton, go with synthetic, get some clean shoes, clean and shorten your nails. Like I said, toenail fungus can act as a reservoir. They can infect your skin and your skin can infect your nails. So you want to cure both. And exercise increases your blood flow and your metabolism, but watch the sweat afterwards. Clean, clean your socks off. And if it's thick and yellow, it's a reservoir site. You may, If you have toenail fungus, you want to treat that too. So I'm going to go over home remedies, why topicals work very well, and they're cheap. And you want to use orals for only severe cases. And this is very rare in people. So studies show, remember how I mentioned that skin takes 30 days to grow out? Well, as you're treating these you want the new layer to grow back healthy. But if you stop after two weeks, the skin cells only half grown out, so they can get reinfected. But if you wait the four weeks and the six weeks, the, the healing rates go up over 80%, dramatically over. I wouldn't be shocked if it's up in the mid 90s. So the most common type of foot fungus is the moccasin distribution. It's because it looks like a moccasin shoe. It, infect, it affects the plantar aspect. You can also get the ves vesicular, but if you're getting pustules like this, you want to see your podiatrist for for treatment because this could pop and become infected, probably beyond the scope of you know caring for it at home by yourself. And interdigital, this you definitely want to dry out because it's moisture getting in between your toes before you start 
uh, using the medications I'm about to show you. So dry it out and then treat it with topicals or the home cure. But the main thing is if you're getting it in between your toes it's because you're moist. Clean it out after showers and keep changing your socks and wear some breathable shoes. So number one, vinegar soaks. You need to do this about, if you're going to go with this route, about 10 to 15 minutes a day while you're watching TV. You can use white vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and you pour about half a cup to a cup into a bowl of water. Take some warm water, pour it in there and mix it, and just soak. It shouldn't burn your feet. If it does, try a different method. And if you have decreased sensation, like if you're a diabetic and you can't feel warm water, be careful. Use gently warm, if not lukewarm water, not hot water. So it's, the pros are it's easy to use, it's very cheap, everybody has it. It's got a high success rate, even though there's no clinical studies really reinforcing it. The, the stories speak for themselves. People who use this, they, they have success. And we know that vinegar provides an inhospitable environment for the fungus, and it can't survive there long. You just got to wait for the new skin to grow that's fungus-free. The cons of this are it can irritate the skin. So if this is you, either go every second day, use less vinegar, or stop completely and use a different method. Another great one is Vicks Vapor Rub. This has camphor, menthol, other co components that have been proven through studies to be antifungal. This is less harmful to the skin. You can apply it at night, lightly rub it. You don't have to use heavy doses. And then put a sock on so it doesn't get on your sheet. So do this for 30 days and great results. Easy to use, very cheap, high success rate. The downsides are it's kind of a hassle to put on every night and get your socks on. And, and I think it's a little bit less potent than vinegar or the medications that you're going to learn about. And probably cost the same price. So if you don't have it at home, don't go out and just buy Vicks Vapor Rubs. Probably go with an antifungal powder or a medication. The one thing about home remedies is avoid heavy chemicals that burn your skin. Avoid the pain to gain mentality. And don't use bleach. Bleach is bad for you. I'm not going to say anything more. Topicals. Studies are fantastic. They all work, essentially. That's why medical studies don't even see if they work anymore, because everybody knows it works. The one recommendation I'll give you is creams versus gels. Creams are more moisturizing, so put that on your foot skin. And gels, they, they dehydrate more. Uh, they're more drying, so put those in between your toes. So gels between your toes, creams onto the skin. Now, powder. These things are fantastic. If you're an athlete, if you're wearing dress shoes, thick socks, walking around, put these on your feet. Not only does it remove the moisture, but it's antifungal. I think these are the best things you can do. The prices aren't unreasonable, especially if you're looking to buy all these things for home remedies. So really look into this. Don't do a home remedy just for the sake of saying you did a home remedy. It makes too much sense to use these things today. Do not try any of this at home alone without supervision. This is presented by Michigan Foot Doctors. If you think our information helped you, give us a thumbs up and come visit the site for even more.